And make sure y'all subscribe to be the homie too, goddamn me, cuz, goddamn, cuz, real creation. Hey, yeah, hey, hey, hey. The big brothers, little boys, don't fuck with hey, They don't fuck the club up. Yeah, hey, yeah, Nick Grand, what up? Nick Grand, what up? Hey, hey, hey. Someone tell the DJ to play my song. Hey, someone tell my flying roll up that strong. Hey, someone tell these hoes don't call my phone. Hey, I do this shit too good, these bitches think. What's up, everybody? Tune in, man. I'm real confident, creation. You know, here, man. Got to introduce yourself, bro. Jay the Way, you know, nighttime legend. Old man, man, Lord, you know what I'm saying? Checking in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, tell the people where you're from, you know what I'm saying? Let them get up, you know what I'm saying? Man, I'm from that town, west side, you know, but honestly, I grew up in every hood, every part of that. Like, I done lived on the west side, Breeze Town, north side. Shit, high school, I grew up on the south side. Like, I grew up very poor in that, you know what I'm saying? So, me, I consider my part, I, can, I consider myself just a, I'm from that. I am that. Yeah, all over, huh? Yeah. So, uh, you went to uh, Niagara Central, how old did you graduate? 13, the best goddamn class in the history of Niagara Central. But, yeah, you know, 35, 13, man. Uh, CB, uh, MC, how long you been MC? Shit, man, honestly, I wasn't even supposed to be an MC, but my DJ, shout out to DJ K Smooth, he started DJing about, we, you know what I'm saying, a year, year plus ago. So my whole thing was, I wanted him to get on because, you know, we back before all that, we threw kickbacks, and he always used to play the music off the phone. So I wanted him to get on as a DJ. So, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna be the hype man for my nigga just to, you know what I'm saying, for him to get better. Yeah, yeah, but I ain't, when I picked up the mic, I ain't put it down the scent. So I've been seeing for about over, a little over a year, same amount of time, can't move. I see y'all boys pretty hard duo. Yeah, we're the best duo, man. We throw the best parties, best everything. What do you think the best part of MCN is? I used to play ball, you feel me? I grew up playing, you know what I'm saying, football, so I think the best part of MCN is getting that reaction from the crowd like it's the same when you get that crowd control it's the same feeling as like making a play on the field like i like you you look through life for certain things to match certain things like niggas look for the same high but that's my high that i got from playing sports with the crowd control you know what i'm saying so when the crowd fuck with me it's up yeah, yeah. i've been seeing on instagram everybody been talking about it your mixtape, you feel me? Yeah. What you, what you, how you feel about the mixtape coming out? <sighs> man, honestly, I was supposed to drop on the 26th, but my, um, you know, my my business partner, uh, the nigga who started me rapping, like 2014, my nigga Young Lane, you know what I'm saying? He went through some stuff. Cause not only is he the only feature on my tape, he mixed, mastered, and engineered my whole tape, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. He went through some things, you feel me, and it just put a, it put a big delay on it. I went through some stuff personally, you know what I'm saying? So it delayed, but you know, you know, profession takes time, so it's about to come out soon, soon, soon. What you think when it drop? How you feel it's gonna do? I think I'm gonna have tape of the year. Tape of the year? I think I'm gonna have this tape of the year. But only because, like, even like how we talked about me emceeing, I laid the foundation for me to do this shit. Like, I put time in. It was months where I MC for free, you know what I'm saying? I ain't make a dime, and I didn't rock that parties with hundreds of people, you know what I'm saying? Watching the, the party promoters make thousand dollars, I don't, I don't get nothing, but I, I sacrificed, bro. I put myself in position. Stay down. You know what I'm saying? I stayed, stayed down till I came up. Now it's my time to come up. I don't think nobody fucking with me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm from the project. What's the name of it? Jaquan the mixtape. Jaquan my middle name. You feel me? So. Had to do it like that. So out of the songs, I know what's your favorite song on this tape? It's tough. It is my first one, so it's like my first one. You know, I got a son, so it's like my son, baby. Probably I forty nine, baby. Cause I forty nine, baby. baby. Yeah, I got the. What you was feeling when you when you, when you shot that? Oh, when, uh, when I did I for actually I was in Lafayette. You know what I'm saying? I was staying in Lafayette with Young Lane and. Yeah, Lane hooked me up with this, you know what I'm saying, producer by the name of Nick Grand. Y'all fuck with Nick Grand. So when I hooked up with Nick Grand, you feel me? I I had to record the last three songs for the tape so Lane could, you know, start the process. 
So I went to Nick Grand House and I had wrote half of I-49, baby. But I recorded the two songs so fast that when I got to I-49, baby, I just gave it a try. Yeah. And when I laid it down, it came out how it came out. But it, when I was making it, it was like I was reflecting on close friends I'd lost and how it is and where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? And that time, so it's, it's yeah. crazy out here right now in that time. So, you know, thinking about, you know, my boy Skeeter, Bull, you know what I'm saying? Everybody know Bull, Long Live Bull. Um, my cousin KD, Long Live KD. I was thinking about a lot of people. I was even talking about friendship. So it was, it was, it was like therapeutic when I made it. That's you my favorite one. So something that you said that I was about to ask you, like, what is it like growing up in Negatives? Like, Man, growing up in that is different because it's a small town, but it's a lot going on. So you might look at it from a a, a, a visitor point of view and be like, man, it's a whole small town, but the murder rate probably just as high as Shreveport. And all, and it, it's a lot of racial problems in the cities. It's a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying, going on that you, it, it ain't built for the weak. Like, you can make it out of negatives, you can make it through Afghanistan, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it, it's different, but it prepares you for life. If if yeah. you if you get through growing up in Nagas, when you go to other places, you capitalize every opportunity because we don't have them. Yeah. For sure. Uh, who influenced you to rap? Like? Uh locally I could say um Jeffrey Lynn gotta be like one of my like biggest influences ever. And my cousin Lemon, shout out to my cousin, free my nigga Lemon. My cousin Lemon used to rap when I was young, bro, and like he was always on square freestyle and shit. Everybody fuck with him, you know, he was all he was in all kind of gangster shit. But just growing up he ain't like different niggas from negative, bro, it just it it just motivated me and like when I got older I started listening to Boosie and Fat and the whole trip, fam. And, you know what I'm saying? Gates, you know, back when Gates was performing at the B and Johnson for fucking ten dollars a ticket. Like all all this collection of music. Missing with New York, I'm a Jay-Z fan, Biggie, like I listen to everything, you know what I'm saying? So, it just all inspired me. I always had a flow. I've been freestyling since I was fucking like 12 years old. I was always a bit freestyling, you know what I'm saying? So, that's just how they went. So, uh, what type of music you, what type of music you grew up on? Like, when you were growing up, what type of music would you most of? Uh, man, screw, like, I'm a big screw head, like, Lil Kiki probably one of my top five rappers of all time. I'm big on screw. Boosie, the whole Lava House movement. Um, like I say, Jay, Biggie, um, Gates, Kevin Gates, probably my favorite rapper of all time. Um, just a collection of people, bro. Like, I like him. Like, I listen to Snoop, you know what I'm saying? I listen to a lot of people. I'm big on bars and flow. If you got bars and you can flow, like, you got the perfect balance combination, you got your own display. I'm gonna hear you out, you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't really, you know, the beat cool, but you gotta be saying something. So yeah, that's, that's what it, pretty much who inspired me as a whole. Okay, you know, why you felt like, okay, you say Nagas is a small city, right? Mm hmm. So, you think Nagas is pretty slipped on, like 318 area? I think the whole, I think our whole 318 culture is like slipped on. Like, we created the ratchet culture. And ratchet is a word that you use like around the world. Everybody yeah, ratchet, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it started in three one eight, Nagas Street Poor, Alexandria. Yeah, that's the real definition of ratchet. Yeah, like we we embody ratchet. Like we embody and ratchet is not just somebody who looks a certain way. Ratchet is like a mindset, a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Like, I don't care because I know I'm ratchet, you feel me? Like you might think I'm ugly, but I'm ratchet. Somebody's gonna like it because they're ratchet too. That's why we all got some ratchet in us, you feel me? So, this is how they go, man. Really? So, how you feel about rappers that rap about stuff they don't live? Like, they rap about it, but you know they ain't, you know? I feel like people go through stages, like men, especially like where we come from, you know what I'm saying, Louisiana, in Louisiana period. I feel like men, we go through these phases. Like, you go through, you young, and high school is a big phase, and you got college. I feel like, Niggas don't really be happy with themselves, you know what I'm saying? At their like pure level, like how they are as a person just naturally. So they gotta create a facade on stuff that they probably ain't like everybody like gangsta music, gangsta movies, you know what I'm saying? Call of Duty, gangsta shit. But it's like 
it's not built for everybody to live that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody can't go to the military. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they created a facade for themselves, and they want to live through that. But when they dead, or they in jail, or somebody close to them get killed, or stuff really start to happen, now they want to revert back to like they real self. Like nigga, too late. So I feel like niggas ain't gonna learn until it's too late. But be yourself. Nobody can beat you being you, bro. Yeah, that's a lot of people don't do. Yeah. To me, want to fit in, huh? Yeah, everybody, you know what I'm saying? Everybody want to wear black, but don't nobody want to wear white or green. Like, everybody want to look the same. You know what I'm saying? You got to stand out, bro. That's how you, they, like, you, as long as you're doing dope shit consistently, bro, somebody going to come and invest in you. So why not just be yourself if you dope? Yeah. But be lame. What uh, makes you as an artist stand out from other artists? Uh, I'm me. I was rolling down Kaza, one deep in the biz. Got my mind on money, give a fuck about friends. I used to dream of riding foreign. Would have said it's twins, now I'm on my way 